Corinthians, 2 Corinthians and chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. And we invite your attention to verses 6 through, uh, let's see, 6 through 10. 6 through 10 of 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. See Reverend Brown, she's been trying to take care of mama and Amen. situation Amen. with Auntie. And Amen. Glad you can stop in on us this morning. Yes, sir. Glad you're here. Thank Second you. Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 6 through 10. And I'm reading out here from the King James Version of the Scripture. It says, For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But yeah. now I forbear. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Yeah. Verse 7 says, Lest I should be exalted above measure yeah. through the abundance of revelations that was given me a thorn in the flesh, mm -hmm. the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Yeah. For this thing I besought the Lord. I prayed to God thrice or three times that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace my is grace. sufficient grace. for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In verse 10, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Yes. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Yes. For this thing, yes. this yes. thing, I besought the Lord thrice Come that on. it might depart from me. My, my, my. He said unto me, my, my grace my is sufficient for thee. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, I'm grateful to God who has given me the Ooh. ability to to learn quickly and to be able to pick up things, to be able to discern things and figure things out. And, uh, you know, we live in a computerized world today. And if you don't know anything about computers, you're going to be in pretty bad shape. Amen. I've never taken a computer class. I'm basically a self-taught computer. I won't say weird, but I'm able to hold them all. Amen. Amen. But as long as I've been working on computers and as much as I write, as much as I do on computers, every now and then I run into a situation that when I'm trying to get rid of something, when there's something I feel like I no longer want or that I no longer need, and I go to that old button that we call the delete button, and what I've discovered over time is that, that not everything is deletable. Yeah. There are times that I've tried to delete something and my delete just wouldn't delete it. It would not work. In other words, my delete was denied. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about when delete is denied. When delete yeah. is denied because it goes beyond our computers. Yeah. Because every day we live with situations and, and, and experiences My Lord. that we wish we could get over, that we wish we could get through. There are some things in our lives. And I'm not talking about your ex friend. I'm not talking about that. But there are some things, some experiences in our lives Jesus, Jesus. that we would love to be able to just hit the delete button so we can get it out of our life. There are some things that we go through sometimes that, that, that causes us pain and suffering. We wish that we could just hit a delete button to make it all go away. As a matter of fact, there are times that we do just like Paul did and we fall down on our faces before God. And we cry out to God and says about Paul three times that he says, God, delete this thing out of my life. He said it was giving me a thorn in the flesh, some form of pain and anguish and suffering in order that while God works in me and through me, I don't get the big head. He said there's a thing that has been placed in my life to really buffet me or to govern me so that whenever I do and however God uses me, God gets the glory. Because sometimes God can use us in 
such a, an, an, an amazing way, Cam. God can use us in such an amazing way that we begin to think that the power is all ours. We begin to think that it's all about ourselves. But I'm glad that God had a way of cutting us down the side and letting us know that it was not for him that we would not be able to endure. There are times that I wish that I could just hit that delete button and make some things go away. I don't know about y'all, but there's some things I get sick and tired of. There's some things that I get tired of having to go through over and over again. I just get fed up. I just get sick and tired of it. And I just want to delete it out of my life. There may be some people who are here today, and I know there are some throughout the land that are wishing right now they are in situations where they wish I could just delete it out of my life. Because of what it's causing me to go through, because of the experiences that I'm having, I wish I could just get it out of my life. And there are people now as I speak and as we listen who are yet praying right now, God, to move it. Remove it, get it out of my life. Uh -huh. And that's what Paul was doing. Paul was saying, Gee, he was trying to hit the delete button. He was saying, Jesus, listen, 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 I've got to call on you because I've not been able to overcome this hey, thing by myself. Hey, hey, yeah. And I'm glad that he knew who to call on. Do you know who to call on? Yeah. I said, Do you know who to call hey. on? There are times that I jokingly say to people when they say, Oh, Jesus, help me. I said, you want to call on somebody you know? <laughs> you want to help anybody who knows the man? I said, is anybody here who knows the name of Jesus? There is a name that is above every name. And it's at that name that every knee must bow. There it comes, shelter. That Jesus Christ is Lord above all. And at least Paul knew who to call on. He called on Jesus and he knew that God was able. Do you know that God is able? Listen, even when God ignores your delete, that doesn't mean that he's not able. Hey, hey. I said he's able. Hey. And I take comfort in knowing just that he's able, that he could. If he would, I know he could. And I know that my God, and that's why I'm calling on him first. So I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know, when, I, when I'm dealing with computers and then I run into something that I cannot delete. Yeah. Let me tell you a couple of things that I discovered about that. Usually, it is something that is concealed from view. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's something that is concealed from view. When you look at this, now many of us, we interpret it and you hear us say it sometimes that Paul had a thorn in his side. It just said it was in his flesh. Amen. It didn't say it was in his side. It could have been a thorn. It could have been something that was in his head. And some think that maybe on the head, some think it was something about his eyesight. Whatever it was, let me help you out here today. You may not always know what it is. But all you know is I just hurt somewhere. When the doctor asked me, why does it hurt everywhere? Listen, and what I discovered is sometimes it is concealed. Whatever is going on is concealed from you. There are times even that a message will pop up and say a hidden file. Yeah, yeah. A hidden file. And, and, and I don't want it to be hidden because whatever it is, I want to be able to find it because I feel like if I can find it, I can do something about it. I hope you understand that even what we're going through right now, we know there's a virus, but we don't know really where it comes from, how it got here, how it spread. We don't really understand all the dynamics of it. We wish we could find and pinpoint it because then we feel like then we can find what the cure is. Yeah. We can fix this thing. Yeah. Isn't it something that sometimes there's something going on in your life and it's hidden from hey. you and you hey. don't really know what the hey. source of it is? All you know is I'm hurting. And even it begins to come through your mind. Was it what I ate? Was it what I was last night? Was it what I did last week? Was it what I drank? What, what is going on around here? Is it who I was keeping company with? We are searching our minds and our hearts trying to find out what is it that's going on. But I discovered that sometimes it's concealed. Yeah, From you. Listen, listen. God does not always show you What's going on? Listen, 
don't, 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 think, don't think unkindly of God. But God will allow you to suffer sometimes and won't even tell you what's hurting you. Amen. And God, see, just like for Paul, there are times, there are times, watch what happens, there are times that God will be testing you as it was in Paul's case, but there are also times that the devil will test you. Are you feeling me today? Job, listen, God was really not the one that tested Job. Job was really tested by the devil. Me and I'll make it pressure to your face. I'll work on him until he denied you. Yeah. There are times that God will allow some things to go on in your life. And you won't even be able to identify. You won't be able to identify the source of it. You're trying to figure out how did this happen? Why did this happen? And you were going through all of this, but here's, here's what's happened. It is concealed. From you. My God. Man, I tell you, I wish God would show me something. God shows me a lot. He shows you a lot. I wish God would show me sometimes the source of my pain and my anguish because I just feel like if I can see it, if I can get to it, then I can, I can, I can handle it. And I've even gone into my computer sometimes when it says the file is hidden. That the, one of the things that it tells me that even though it's hidden, it's somewhere. Yeah. And I, I go searching for it. I'm like, where, where, where is it? Because if I can get to it, I can get this thing out of my life. Yeah. But there are times, that, listen, that there are things that are concealed yeah. from view. The second thing that I understand that as I have worked on computers and worked on files and, and as I have been confronted with situations where there were times that I couldn't delete things out of my file and off my computer and out of my life. Yeah. It's not always a concealed from view. But second, there are times that it was connected to right. another file or yeah. to another component. That there are times that the message will pop up and say, the reason you can't delete this is because it is also part of another program that is already running. Yeah, yeah, right. Some of y'all ain't been there yet, have you? But there are times that when you're dealing with a computer and you can't delete something, it says that you can't delete it because it's connected to another file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm here trying to help you understand today because we can't see everything. We don't know everything. But God does. And God is working things together. And something God will not get out of your life because it is connected to something else in your life. Let me try it another way that you might understand. There are times that he won't remove the pain because the pain is connected to your success. There are times that God will remove the problem because the problem is connected to your ability to grow and become strong. Sometimes God won't get the trouble out of your life because it's going to make you stronger and wiser and trusting in him. There are times that God will allow things to stay in our lives because it is connected to something else. And you just got to resign yourself to the fact that God, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what kind of work you're trying to perfect in my life. But God, I thank you that you won't allow me to move this because it's connected. And, 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 and sometimes, sometimes, we don't discover the connection until it's too late. Mercy. All right now, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There are times when we insist on getting rid of this. Lord, Lord. Only to discover later that I really need it now. That, that's why that's why God stopped Paul after three times because Paul was insisting. <laughs> and I thought God stopped him. So wait a minute. When he says, delete. And Jesus says, my grace. Sometimes he either sins or he allows certain yeah, painful situations to come God. your way yeah. because God is doing something in your life. Yeah. 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 
Amen. 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 God is not making you suffer just for the sake of suffering. Yes. God gets no delight yes. just out of you suffering. But he knows that whatever yes. you're going through, it is connected to something else. Yes. If, listen, if you don't endure the fire, you won't come through as pure gold. So, so this, you, this, uh, and, and this is what Paul is teaching us out of, out of the word this morning. You have to understand that that sometimes you can't delete certain things out of your life, and 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 sometimes you don't know where it hurt, why it hurts, or anything because it's concealed from view. Yeah, right. yeah. And then there are times that you have to understand that that some things you're not going to be able to get rid of. God is not going to allow you to get rid of it because it's connected. My, my, my God. My God. <laughs> God will allow you to go through some trials and some tribulations because he has, he has, listen, God has a throne waiting on you. And you've got to endure, you've got to go through it because God has greater things to do. God is molding you, making you, shaping you, getting you ready. Thank you. Ain't anybody ready to say what I God, I thank you. I thank you. I don't know what the source of it is, but listen, help me, God. I don't know what all that's about, but God, I thank you. Because, listen, I know that it's connected. All things work together for them who love the Lord and those who are calling to call to his purpose. Yes. See, it's all about God. Yes. It's all about what he's doing. Yes. And sometimes, listen, sometimes we're just crying and carrying on and God says, listen, would you just shut up and go on? I got you. Yes. 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 But, but I, I don't know what's not that. Go on, I got you. Amen. Yes. Yes. And you ought to do like I do sometimes. Sometimes, if I know I'm going into a difficult situation, you heard me say before, I'm like, Lord, cover me. I'm going in. Amen. I'm going in. I'm going into the snake pit. I'm going into the fire and Lord, cover me. And I, it doesn't matter where I go and what waits me there as long as you got me covered. Yeah. My God. Here's a, mm. One of the things I discovered is not, not just yeah. that, you know, these uh, <laughs> things that we can't delete are concealed from view and then they're connected. Mm -hmm. But, but, but here, here's, here's another thing Ooh. that, that, that yeah. I, I, I discovered is that, that whatever that thing is or whatever that file is, whatever that, no. even if it's hidden, even if I can see whatever it is that I don't even know about, whatever it is, that some kind of way, not only is it connected, but it controls future operations. Every now and then, I have a get rid of spell. <laughs> I mean, across the board, mm -hmm. the closet, the garage, mm -hmm. the car. Yeah. Every, every night, I just get a get rid of spell. Yeah. Well, I just start throwing things away, giving things away, selling things off. I just, I just have a, a, a get rid of something. Just come over me. I just look around. I'm, like, I'm just tired of all this. I, need to get it. I go through my computer sometimes. I delete files and I delete pictures. I delete, and then only to find out that later on I discovered that not only was it connected to something else. But it controls the operation. I find that later on, I can't do what I wanted to do because I got rid of that component that I needed. You're trying to get rid of some stuff that God is trying to use. No, no, I'm not trying to keep you from going to clean your closet. Please clean it out. You don't need all those shoes. Amen. You don't need all those clothes. Amen. Clean it out. Listen, get the junk out of your trunk. I'm not Amen. mad at you. But some of us are trying to get rid of some things that God is trying to use. And we're trying to get rid of it because it causes us pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Make that 
regardless, <laughs> listen, you have to understand now that that, that I, I realize that this is that this is a, this is concealed from view and that it's connected, but then it controls future operations. That's something you won't be able to accomplish if you don't go ahead and go through this. Yeah. That, that, that's why. And I'm glad that Paul was not a slow runner. He picked it up right away. He said, "Okay, I'm good." Now that you put it like that, yeah. Amen. He says, "I'm good." Because here's what we're doing. Let me give you three things real quick, and then we're gonna get out of here. Because here's what we are doing. When God allows pain to come into our lives, when it allows trouble and struggle to come into our lives, we struggle. Listen, we're trying to make sense of our suffering. Did you hear what I said? Don't act like you don't feel me. I said we struggle. We're trying to make sense of our suffering. We go through it and try to figure out was it something that I said? Was it yeah. something that I did? Was yeah. it something I overlooked? Was it something I should have done and didn't do? We go through all of this. With all of this, how did this happen? Why am I in this situation? We struggle trying to make I should not be hurting like this. Yeah. We go back in our memory. Yeah. Yeah. Now wait, come on, come on. Sure, the Lord ain't trying to pay me back to what I did in 1967. <laughs> we're trying to make sense out of it. You know, and we're like Job was, like Job's so-called friends were. We're trying to listen, we're trying to figure things out. And then we then we conclude that I must have done something yeah. wrong. Yeah. 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 We're struggling trying to make sense of the suffering. Why am I suffering like this? Why am I going through this? Let me help you out. It's not always because you did something wrong, sometimes because you did something right. To go through something because God wants to use you in a greater way. Yeah. And so we struggle with this idea, this whole thing. We're trying to make sense of our suffering. But I go to church every Sunday. I pay my tithe. I'm nice to everybody. I don't cuss that much. I don't laugh every now and then. I don't understand. But I'm suffering like this. <laughs> We're trying to make sense. Is it because I had a drink last night? Why, God? Are you called, why are you letting me go through all of this? You know, was it a lady that refused to carry the groceries for? Was it a guy on the corner that I didn't give any money to? God, why? And we struggle trying to make sense out of it. We, tr we struggle trying to make sense out of it. Paul at least understood some parts. He says, there's a thorn given in my flesh and it's to buffet me. It is to control me. It is to govern me so that I don't, and, and, and not only not myself, but, but then other people don't see me as being more than I really am. And that I don't see myself as being more or bigger than I really am. Keeps me in a position where I can praise God and glorify God and honor God. But I understand that it's not about me, but it's all about God. Do we not struggle? We're trying to make sense out of our suffering. Yeah, yeah. We struggle with it. Yes, sir. Because we don't understand it. Right now. Not, not only do we struggle trying to, trying to make sense of our suffering, but we strain in trying to endure the pain. Do you understand what excruciating pain is? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when I hear some people talk about their experience with the virus and they talk about, you know, it, and it affects people different ways, but, you know, I've heard people talk about how, you know, the pain of it all, the suffering of it all, and, and how excruciating the pain can be sometimes, and, and, and how they felt like that they were absolutely dying. Almost to the point of giving up. See no way out. You know, and there are times that we strain trying to endure the pain. There, 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 there are times that it seems like God puts more pressure on us than we can handle. And I what we say, we say that the Bible tells us that He doesn't put more on us than we can bear. But let me tell you something. I understand the Bible. Trust me, I study the Bible. I read the Bible. I understand that. But let me suggest something to you. This is just an idea. You can figure it out for yourself. But let me suggest something to you. Is that God always puts something on us that we can't bear. Because we were not intended to bear. And sometimes he puts more on us than we can bear. Just to turn us around and make us come back to him. We strain trying to endure the pain. Yeah, yeah. 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 Paul didn't just pray 
every time because he thought it was some kind of ritualistic way of getting God to answer your prayers. He was hurting. He was having a tough time trying to endure the pain. And he says, I prayed three times the Lord would remove this pain. This pain out of my life. He tried to delete it, but the delete was denied. <laughs> and then finally, not only we struggle trying to make sense of our suffering, but then we're strained trying to endure the yeah. pain because we we believe, we believe, we're believers, and we believe that no matter how badly we hurt, mm -hmm. that God is going to bring us through. Do we not? We believe that no matter how tumultuous the storm is, that God is going to bring us out. It hurts while we're going through it, but we just believe that God is going to bring us through it. That's what we do as believers, as people of faith. We believe that God is going to bring us through it. And then, when you get to the conclusion of all that, here's what happens. We finally, listen, we finally surrender and submit ourselves to God's will. That's what we do. That's what we do. Yeah. You read it then. He said, then I take pleasure yeah. in my infirmities. I understand that in my weakness, I am made strong. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. Listen, Paul did not argue with God and said, wait a minute now, God. You know I'm one of your best servants. You know I ain't like, wait here, God. You know I'm a faithful servant. Hallelujah. But then he found it. And that's what God is looking for. You know what God is, God is looking for? Surrender. Yes, yes, yes. He's looking for surrender. He's looking for submission. He's looking for you and me to surrender to him and listen to give up and say, Lord, I give. God is waiting on you and he's waiting on me to tap out and say, I surrender. God, you got me in a hole here. I don't know how you got me in this, but I can't get out of it. But I can't get out of it. Ah, let me go. Let me go. Surrender. Submit your will to God's will. And God, listen. Hallelujah. Don't, don't beat that delete button like Ray beats our drum. I know what you do. You're like me. I know what you do. That's why you have to buy another computer. Because you abuse your delete button. It ain't the delete button's fault. Listen, God was sending us through some things, but please know that he's got his arms around you the whole world. Yeah. And he's right there. Yeah. And when God said, when he says, my grace is sufficient for you. And that's just another way of God saying, I got you covered. Yeah. Stop your squealing, stop your complaining, stop your crying, stop all your squalling because you're making me look bad. Go ahead and dry it up. And I, you know, and I wish that God would just, uh, I wish God would just do something that I could comprehend, that I could understand. You know, I wish He would just talk to me in a way that that I can get it right away. I wish He see if, if God would talk to me like Mama did, I'd be good. <laughs> Because when you went through a beating in Gladys' house, I don't care how much it hurt when she said, and you better dry it up. It was a miracle. It was a miracle. I should have dried it up. And God is saying, trust me. He didn't put it out. He didn't say, hey, you better dry it up. <laughs> but he does say, trust me. Just relax. And we're going to get through this. Just relax. And so that's what Paul, Paul surrendered and he submitted his will to God's will. He was good after that. He went on about his business. He didn't sit up you know, fussing and cussing and talking about God. He went right on his own book. You know, if you got me there, I'm good. Amen. Anybody besides me here today who understand that if God is with you, you'll go anywhere and you'll do anything. You'll do anything. Amen. Amen. If Jesus, you know what we say about Jesus when he hung on the whole regular cross, we always say, you know, and he never said among them words. Then what you whining about? All right. 
it wasn't stuck stun on your feet so I go ahead and get out of here. It wasn't the pain of the nails in his hand or in his feet or the spear that was put in his side or the thorn of uh, the crown of thorns that was placed on his head. That was not his painful situation. The pain that Jesus experienced was your sins and mine. Yes. 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 And he endured all the way till he yes. said what? Well, it is finished. Yes. It's finished. It's finished. And we're going to have to endure some things. But we're going to come out. I don't know if you'll be smelling like a rose, but you're going to come out. <laughs> a whole lot better than you were. Because God is trying to perfect something in your life. I'm not talking about the things that we bring on ourselves. I'm talking about those things that God allowed to be placed in our lives. Where he uses those things. That he might grow us and develop us. That we might understand that through my weakness, I'm very strong. Thank you, Lord. God blesses and God keeps us. Yeah. Father, we bless you. We thank you so much, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. God, continue to work yeah. with you. Yeah. God, we pray that if there's one that I missed today who's out of the ark of safety, that you touch, that you speak, Lord, that they might come before it's everlasting too late. We thank you, Lord God, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. The doors of the church.